good evening. I'd like to open the meeting for Human Resources and Education a Committee as a whole meeting for October 3rd, 2013. Roll call, please, Ms. Taylor. Mr. Hennigan. Here. Mrs. Hines. Here. Mr. Darman. Here. Mr. Luke. Here. Mr. Harold. Here. Mrs. Tipton. Here. Mr. Jeter. Here. Mrs. Seeley. She's here. She's here. Mr. Badgercourt. Here. Mr. Walmart. Here. Mr. Pangs. Mr. Lamar. Here. Mr. Alfred. Ms. Belisaria. Here. And Ms. Smollett. Present. Thank you. Would you all please stand for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Luke? Heavenly Father, assist us tonight in the decisions for our school system. And protect our families from the possible approaching storm. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Loop. We had no persons requesting time on the agenda, so we'll go to item four, five, approval of the minutes for committee as a whole meeting held September 5th, 2013. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do we have any questions from board members? Comments from the public? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? All abstain? abstain? Motion carried. Ms. Heinz. Ms. Mellon, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we open the agenda to dis uh, we have with us tonight Ms. <coughs> Susan Russell and Mayor Don Villery from the city of Mandeville to discuss Keep Mandeville Beautiful and uh, I, I would like to go ahead and have them at this your education committee meeting so I make a motion that we open the agenda second. okay I have a motion and a second to open the agenda uh, for the keep Slido beautiful committee uh, I'm so <laughs> sorry I'm from Slido we want Slido sorry too. Covington <laughs> Balsam sorry. keep Mandeville beautiful <laughs> oh keep St. Tammany beautiful um, any questions from board members, comments from the public? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All those abstain? Motion's passed. Okay. We would like to, um, oh, Mayor, Mayor Villery. Thank you so much, uh, Robin. And it's, it's a pleasure to be with you tonight uh, and board members and uh, Mr. Fultz, uh, the staff. Uh, it, as I said, it's a pleasure to be with you as uh, Mayor of Mandeville and to tell you that we're here tonight as far as to, to recognize the achievements of students at Mandeville High School, Fountain Blue High School, and Lakeshore High School in conjunction with an award that the city of Mandeville was given through Keep Louisiana Beautiful, which was the Innovative Program Award. And I don't want to steal Susan Russell's thunder here as far as I'm going to let her go ahead and tell you a little bit about it. But uh, I do have with me tonight uh, uh, Lee Harris from Keep Louisiana Beautiful. Lee, could you stand up? And also Carla Buckholtz, who is uh, Councilwoman Buckholtz from District 2 in Mandeville and also a board member for Keep Mandeville Beautiful. So uh, I if I could, Susan, could you go ahead and... Tell these folks what a great job those kids did during our, this program. Thank you. Keep Mandeville Beautiful, um, we do a lot of educational programs. We believe educating our young people, getting to them as early as we can is definitely the way to go. And um, we have an uh, educational program that consists of a puppet show. We are in all the schools every year um, with various programs. But we really felt like we wanted to do more when it came to high school students, especially trying to target them as they become teen drivers and the responsibilities with that. We were very fortunate to receive a $10,000 grant from Keep Louisiana Beautiful that allowed us to put this program together and to bring it to the three schools. 
the original idea of the program and then what, what actually transpired over the past six months were two completely different things. And that is because we involved the schools as well as the students in the uh, program development. And that was key. I would have to say of all the programs that I've put together, this is probably one of the most exciting ones. And I attribute that 100% uh, to the involvement from the teachers at the schools as well as the students. Um, Keep Mandeville provided the structure and the leadership, but we really turned it over to the students and let them make the decisions because we felt that it, was, uh, it would be a much stronger, um, effective program for uh, one peer to, to be talking to another peer about why they shouldn't be littering. So um, again, what I said, how it started out, we wanted to target teen drivers originally, thinking that when teens get their license, they, you know, we, we pound them over the head, no texting and driving, you know, no drinking and driving, wear your seatbelt, no speeding, and we thought we wanted to add another one to that, and that would be no littering as well when you're driving. So it was going to be a program that target teens um, when they apply for a school parking permit on campus, that we would, that would be a way that we could um, introduce the um, program to them and to reach them and educate them that way by having them sign a roadside litter pledge. Um, and it came with the, some of the materials that y'all have there, the, the air freshener for the car, the car litter bag, the roadside pledge. Once we brought these students together, they saw this so much bigger and they really expanded it to where it became an anti-litter awareness week. And what that did is it brought in the, um, the broadcast class as well. And we provided to the class the, uh, a lot of photographs and copy points, but we gave them complete creative control as to how they wanted to do it. So every day for that week, um, a different message was broadcasted into the classrooms of these three high schools. So the theme was litter, there's a bag for that. And it focused on four main points. Litter is costly, litter is harmful, litter is illegal, and litter is preventable. It reached over 5,000 students at these three schools. And I'm gonna show you a brief clip. This is uh, one of the students that um, served on the committee. He has graduated and is now attending Loyola, but he was one of our key students and this is a sample of the um, of the video that was broadcast in the classroom starting monday is 2013 environmental week and with students across mandeville are taking anti-litter into their own hands each day next week keep mandeville beautiful will be providing lakeshore with a call to action in which students like yourself can speak out against litter's harmful preventable illegal and costly effects during your lunch hour next week, stop by the Keep Manival Beautiful table and receive a free water bottle, donut, car litter bag, or a t-shirt. In fact, each time you stop by the table, your name will also be entered into a raffle for a VIP parking spot for the 2013 school year or a 2013 football season pass. Hope to see you all there, Titans. Have you taken notice of the litter which is polluting Mandeville? Litter is everywhere. In fact, more than 51 billion pieces of litter pollute U.S. roadways each year. In Mandeville, litter is a particularly prevalent issue due to our city's ditches. Litter in ditches washes into local waterways, polluting and causing harm to the environment and wildlife. Remember, Titans, that this is 2013 Environmental Week. Each day this week, Keep Mandeville Beautiful will be sponsoring a call to action in which students like yourself can give back to your environment and even receive a little something in return. Today's call to action focuses on litter's effects on water and animals in our community. If you come by the Keep Mandeville Beautiful table in the mall during your lunch hour, just fill out a simple information card and you can win a free water bottle. Tomorrow's Environmental Week activity is to wear a green shirt. If you wear a green shirt, just like this one, you'll even have the opportunity to be entered into a drawing to win a free Keep Mandeville Beautiful t-shirt. See you tomorrow, Titans. So. That went on a different segment every day for the whole week. Um, this is just a, a slide of our committee. So like mentioned, every day we tied a free promotional item with the theme. So if his litter was harmful, it pollutes, pollutes the water, we tied it with the water bottle. The idea was to drive as much traffic to that table every day. And when they got there, they signed the pledge. The pledges were turned over to keep 
uh, Mandeville Beautiful. So from this, we got email addresses of all the students. That allows us to continue to communicate with them and develop those relationships. Each school had posters and signs that they put on display. They loved the donuts. That was a big hit. Right. And the students told us, if we feed the kids, they will come. And they were right. So this is just, like I said, a quick overview. It was a really fun um, program. At the end, we did drawings. The free uh, VIP parking spot for our front row parking spot, that was a huge hit, and that was completely free. So we were able to be creative and think of things that we could award the kids with, like the free football passes and things like that, that wouldn't cost the schools um, any additional money. And this program was done completely free to the schools. And that's them signing up every day. We also partnered with um, Blue Harbor Car Wash. These are the barrels that they receive their soap in. They donated 30 of them to us. And on a Saturday, we had about um, 20 kids from the high school show up on a Saturday morning, and it was pretty cool, and they washed these down. And we had stickers made um, with the litter. There's a bag for that. And we turned them into trash cans. The City of Mandeville Public Works Department cut the tops off and put holes in them, and they became trash cans that we put all over campus. And um, they really appreciated those. They were in parking bays. As you all know, the campuses are large. Trash cans are very expensive. And so, quite frankly, the schools just didn't have as many cans out there that they would have liked. So this provided each school with 10 additional trash cans for their parking um, lots as well as for their lunch areas and the signs. Okay, and I'm going to now turn it over to Lee Harris, the Executive Director for Keep Louisiana Beautiful, and Carla Buckles. She is our City Councilwoman for Mandeville, as well as the KMB Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you. As Susan said, we gave um, Keep Mandeville Beautiful a grant last year that enabled them to do this project. And I'll tell you, we give about 35 grants a year to communities and programs <coughs> similar to this. And it was very easy when the um, judges were looking at uh, programs for our innovative um, program award this year to say that this one was extremely innovative and quite unique. And so it's really, we thought it was nice that it was a partnership between Keep Mandeville Beautiful and those three high schools because the students actually had a real role in developing that campaign. Uh, so tonight, uh, we wanted to present our certificates to each of the schools. So uh, the first one is to Fountain Blue High School. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next is to Lakeshore High School. And finally, Mandeville High School. Congratulations. And thank you to the school board for all of your support for our organization as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for partnering with us. Um, our slogan this year is to um, community connections. And uh, we do need to all work together. And, and we ap appreciate with you uh, working with our three high schools. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda. We have consideration of common of a common core for a common core resolution. Mrs. Hines. Thank you, Ms. Mullet. Um, board officers met after being uh, asked by fellow board members, uh, talking with our administrators, members of the public, and doing research on their own to develop um, a resolution regarding common core. And I'd like to read that resolution now for you. Whereas the St. Tammany Parish public school system provides a caring environment for learning, a challenging and re relevant curriculum, innovative instruction, and solid student achievement, and whereas the majority of St. Tammany Parish School Board opposed the Common Core State Standards since the idea was first introduced in the state of Louisiana through the rejection of a race to the top agreement in January of 2010, 
and whereas constant commitment to improvement and high performance has made the St. Timothy Parish Public School System a leader in the state of Louisiana by all major standards of educational excellence, and whereas the members of the St. Timothy Parish School Board, duly elected by the citizens of the parish, believe that education is not the mandate of the federal government or any national board, and whereas the St. Tammany Parish School Board believes that the Common Core State Standards were implemented too quickly, are not perfect standards, and may not reflect the norms of our community in all cases, and whereas we do not currently believe that the St. Tammany Parish Public School System has objectionable material in any of our existing or proposed curriculum, however, we do furthermore encourage all parents, teachers, and administrators to elevate concerns of material in the curriculum to the principals, superintendent, and school board members. And whereas PARC, Partnership for Assessments of Readiness for College and Careers Assessments, PARC Assessments, must be purchased with equipment and technology installed for completion of PARC requirements at a burden to our school system. And whereas the St. Tammany Parish School Board objects to the collection and sharing of massive amounts of student data required to be shared through the park agreement, which violates student privacy. And whereas our belief is that Common Core State Standards do not justify the disruption to instruction, accountability, professional development, and teacher preparation that follows adoption of these standards and park assessments in our system. And we further believe that the guaranteed curriculum adopt, adopted and implemented in the St. Tammany Parish public school system meets the needs of every child every day in St. Tammany Parish. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the St. Tammany Parish School Board does hereby request that Governor Bobby Jindal, State Superintendent of Education John White, and members of Bessie remove the St. Tammany Parish School System and the other school districts in Louisiana from the implementation of Common Core State Standards and Park Testing. Now, therefore, be it resolved that if Governor Bobby Gentle, State Superintendent of Education John White, and members of Bessie do not take this action, the St. Tony Parish uh, Public School Board does hereby respectfully request members of the Louisiana Legislature use their authority to remove the St. Tammany Parish Public School System and the other districts in Louisiana from the implementation of Common Core State Standards and Park Testing. Be it further resolved that this resolution be spread upon the official minutes of this board with copies being sent to Governor Bobby Jindal, State Superintendent of Education John White, members of Bessie, all members of the Louisiana legislatures, and all schools in the St. Tammany Parish public school system. And I make a motion that we adopt this resolution. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the table and a second it. Do we have any questions from board members? Mr. Harrell. Yes, Ms. Bellard, I'd like to offer an amendment to the uh, resolution, please. I move that we delete the seventh paragraph and beginning after uh, the fifth paragraph, insert the following. Whereas significant time, effort, and expense is associated with the modification of St. Tammany's guaranteed curriculum to comply with Common Core and requirements of its implementation, whereas major investment to equipment, upgrade, and to our infrastructure require, is required to comply with requirements of part, partnerships for assessment and readiness for college and career, whereas the cost of the actual assessments are significantly more expensive than the current assessment, especially since it will cover all grade levels and this will be an ongoing expense that is imposed and that imposes an undue burden on our school system and whereas this is another unfunded mandate of the Saint, to, to the, on the St. Tammany Parish school system and then in, to continue on with the existing resolution. Now so moved. Okay, we have an amendment to the motion. We have a second. So we are going to vote to amend this motion by taking out um, paragraph 7 and inserting Mr. Harold's 
four paragraphs, which we all have copies of. Am I right? Okay, correct. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I apologize. Um, any more questions from board members on this? I have a comment. Okay. Okay. I have a comment toward um, the change in um, the amendment, and that is the testing for park is very expensive. It's like twenty-nine to thirty dollars per test, where we're for <coughs> our leap and so forth. We're paying eight or nine, so this is an added expense, and this is just to allow the public to those that do not know this just some information there on, on that part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Seely. Any other comments from board members? Any comments from the public? Ms. Berrios. I didn't see your hand. Oops. Is this on? Yes. Retired teacher from Mandeville Junior High. Um, of course, I support this resolution. I'm so happy that, again, St. Tammany is taking the lead in doing what's right against um, such a strong force that's taken over not only our state, but all of the states that are, uh, that are laboring under these, these new reforms. I just wanted to point out a couple of things that have happened in the last couple of days that show how important this is. Uh, our State Superintendent White spoke at the American Enterprise Institute Tuesday, and I listened to that online. He said, among other things, uh, advocates need a long-term strategy for implementing ideas. Most of the country's 13,500 school districts, that's locally elected school boards, are, quote, collections of fiefdoms rather than organizations that can manage changes to technology, labor, and curriculum. State and federal regulations hamstring principles, true, said White, adding that he has cut the bureaucracy in Louisiana. This is what he's telling a national audience. In order for schools to change, the central office has to change, White said, and I believe the best way it can change is to trust educators to do their jobs. So he will be all on board with this. Hold them accountable, but trust them. I'm so glad he said that. No more strings, no more distractions, no condescension, no more reports, no more white noise. I love that white noise. We reformers must create conditions of trust if, I, if our ideas are to work. So I assume he's going to trust us in this. He went on in his speech to excoriate school boards and said his goal is to do away with elected school boards. Also, as far as the data uh, collection, I've done a lot of research on that. And just in the last couple of days, I see that the U.S. Department of Ed has awarded a $6.5 million grant to Westat Inc. of Rockville, Maryland to create National Special Education Data Center. So I'm glad that you've done this. I hope that you that you vote for it and it passes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Perry. <laughs> Mr. Hennigan. Thank you, Ms. Mullet. <clears throat> Just <clears throat> a one comment to Charles. I, you know, Charles, I agree with what you are saying here. My, my only concern, and I don't want to even belabor this. This is kind of a tempest in a teapot at this stage, I think. But this is four paragraphs on the cost, and it kind of, uh, I think, takes away from the other points. You know, we just, we can. You're, you're asking to add four paragraphs on cost, and that's just one of several. So, I would have shortened it, but I don't. Thank, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Hennigan. Mrs. Bellisario. I do have some other comments, but I will address the amendment because I assume we're going Correct. to vote we on are, that we first. Correct. We are discussing the amendment. Uh, according to Mr. Hennigan's comment, I was going to suggest a little editing and just make it into two or three, whereas is instead of four. You could easily add the last one to the next to the last paragraph. Just sure. a suggestion. Are you keeping up with this so you can reread it? Okay. Okay. So okay. Any other? Co are you making? A friendly amendment. Are you? Well, you can't really do a friendly amendment. We have I was to just make a on friendly this amendment to Mr. Harrell. When it's typed up, I was just going to suggest making three whereases instead of four. But I, and I would like to reserve some time for after that. I have another amendment. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. 
And I would certainly accept a friendly amendment to do that. Okay, but so Harry, can we vote we, on we the amendment that. with the friendly amendment? We yes. can vote on that. We are voting on the amendment from Mr. Harrell with the friendly amendment from Mrs. Belisario. Any other comments from board members or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I had already asked for their questions. Just the amendment. We're voting on just the amendment and the friendly amendment. All those opposed? All those abstain? The amendment carries. Mrs. Belisario. First, I would like to um, tell the rest of the board how much I appreciate the group that came up with this resolution. I think it's beautifully written. I really appreciate it. That said, I just want to add one or two little words. In the eighth, the eighth uh, whereas, for the benefit of the audience, it says required to be shared through park agreement which violates student privacy. All of us are very concerned about student privacy. And I suggest, it's just for your consideration, add the word, after the word park, or any other, so that we're covered with whatever the state comes up with. Just the words, or any other. Do you want me to give you my other suggestion? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then in the ninth, whereas. But we're going to vote on each one individually, right, correct? Right. Okay. okay. On the ninth, whereas uh, many people don't know that in 2005, our um, central office worked very hard to create our guaranteed curriculum. Miss Araby told me tonight she was the one that had to go to Baton Rouge and defend it. And it was approved by the state. So I think it would be nice to add in there guaranteed curriculum, state approved, adopted, and implemented because it was approved by the state. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Belisario. Did you make a motion? Or, or, so you were making a motion to amend? I was amend making a motion to insert those two little phrases. Okay. So you, I guess we're going to vote on them individually. 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 Mrs. Hines has second them. Okay, so we. any questions on these two changes by board members? Mr. Bettencourt. Uh, this is for Mary Kay. I've got two different ninth where whereas is. Where is the whereas you're talking about? <laughs> okay. On, on the original or on the amended? Mine's on the original because that's all I had to work okay, with. Okay, thank you. So it would be the last whereas that we would add state approved. Any other questions from board members on the amendment, on the motion to amend? Any questions from the, from the public on the motion to amend? Okay, I have a, a motion and a second for the first amendment where we would add um, the data required, okay, whereas St. Tammany Parish School Board objects to the collection and sharing of mass amount massive amounts of students data required to be shared through park or any other agreement you want to add any other agreement that is what we are voting on all those in favor Aye. all those opposed all those abstain motion carries now we are voting on the second amendment from, from mrs belisario where she is going to add Whereas our belief is that the Common Core State Common Core State standards do not justify the disruption to instruction, accountability, professional development, and teacher preparation that follows adoption of these standards and park assessments in our system. We further believe that the guaranteed curriculum state approved adopted and implemented in St. Tammany Parish school system meets the needs of every child every day in St. Tammany Parish. So we are adding in state approved. I've already asked for questions. No, I asked for more. I'm sorry. I am asking for questions on this. Questions or comments on this amendment from the public? Hearing no questions, 
All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All those abstain. Motion carries. Do we have any other questions, comments, or amendments by the board? For the, for the original and the three amendments to this resolution. Do we have any comments from the public on the on the original resolution with the three amendments? All right. Oh, okay. Just come and state your name, please. My name is Nancy Hendrick. Yeah. And Nancy Hendrick, H E N D R I C K, no S. Um, I would like to say, um, I feel that if we say this enough, we might get it. Um, we feel like we have a good curriculum in St. Tammany. We don't feel the Common Core state standards justify the disruption. Elizabeth, excellent. Thank you so much. St. Tammany teachers have helped our parish earn an A in the state letter grade system. Why change? We actually have the highest number of national merit finalists in the state year after year. Why change? We help maintain St. Tammany's place with the highest ACT average in the state even higher than the national average. These children, my kids, they are prepared for college and careers. Why would we trade a curriculum and standards that are success succeeding so well? Why, for something unproven, it's super expensive, created elsewhere, and not by education degree people? Why the Common Core? Why not? As Governor Perry said in Texas, where I'm from, before the Common Core was, the ink was dry, he said, no way. Thank you. Thank you. Just state your name. Hi, Kimberly Fontan. I have three children in the St. Tammany Parish Public Schools. And I just would like to comment, I understand what we've done with the resolution my concern is just that um, we have changed curriculum on our children and you know one of my children was caught in that through seventh grade math change continuing to change the curriculum we need to find a stable place so if we are able to change the curriculum and stick with it at a good place then that works but if we are going to be caught in a vacillating situation where it's common core it's not common core etc that is not a good place to be either. So I just encourage you to think about that as we move forward so that we are not constantly switching our children back and forth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Mr. I'll just make a comment. Yes, you, yes, you, no. You know, Ms. Barrios, made some remarks about what the state superintendent said and certainly this is common knowledge to pretty much every school board member in the state of Louisiana but I want to remind you that what this resolution was birthed out of was you having a voice period turn your fan off Mr. Walmart. I'm sorry was birthed out of you having a voice period with your elected board members and so without that there's a very good chance that their ideas and fascinations in this grand experiment would just simply proceed forward in high gear. So we'd ask you to make your legislators make it known to them that you want to continue to have a voice with elected board members. But if you sit back and do nothing, then uh, the evil pretenious continues to, to move forward. And to me, that's just exactly what it is. So we need your help to try to keep us as your voice. That's it. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Mr. Womack. Do I have? Okay, seeing no other f comments or questions, I am going to call for a vote we, on, the res on the resolution read by Mrs. Heinz with the three amendments 
um, that we are, that we voted on for approval. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All those abstained? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just want to remind our audience that this is a committee as a whole meeting, so this resolution will be presented next Thursday for a full board in the full board meeting for um, a vote for a final board approval. Okay. All right. The next uh, item on the agenda is instruction. We have pre-K update from Mrs. Lane and Mrs. Hosh. Good evening, everybody. We're here tonight, Sharon, myself, Celeste Keeney, who is the coordinator for the Preschool Early Intervention, and Johnny Alford, who is the coordinator for our preschool program. And we're here tonight to celebrate with you the uh, growth, development, and successes of our young children. So I, I thank you, Ms. Heinz, Mr. Folsom, board members, for valuing this so much that we're all together here to celebrate those successes and giving validity to our young children. As we know, through the decades, there have been lots and lots of research about early childhood and its great impact on our children in a long term. So we have here that there are long term improvements in school success. So we have shown, it has been shown and researched, and there's lots of data out there to show it's not just for that four year old year, that three year old year, but for ongoing school success and that children who have participated in high quality preschool programs have higher achievement test scores and even as adults it carries on to adulthood where these children grow into adults who are productive citizens and earn high wages. Whoops. I went backwards, sorry. Another great asset to having a high quality early preschool program is that children remain in the grade with their age appropriate peers and their lower rates of rep uh, repeating a grade and also less need for other interventions for children. So it does improve success. But very important it is to maintain that high quality. And here in St. Tammany Parish, we are committed to high quality and we have certified teachers highly qualified paraprofessionals, and our children are in high um, environments that are high quality because they learn through play. There's not a moment of the day that they're not smiling, but there's also not a moment of the day that they're not learning. We help our families and support our families by having bus transportation and make the access to education one that is um, accommodating to our families. We provide healthy meals and snacks for our children and we help support families in attaining the community accesses and resources, uh, community resources that are out there so that they can easily access those resources in order to support their young children. We know that it's very important to support our young children in their natural surroundings and in their typical environment. At age three, then a child who has received an evaluation and a classification may enter the preschool early intervention program to receive services. These services are based specifically on the needs of the children and are provided in the most effective environment that will be the best for the child and will support their learning and their development. These services can include things such as special instruction, and that would be like gifted services, services for the hearing impaired and visually impaired, occupational and physical therapy, speech and language therapy, and adaptive physical education. At this very young age, we know that our children imitate one another. We know that in a child's life at a young age, differences are just part of life. So they accept one another, and they learn from each other. We also strive in St. Tammany Parish to have an inclusive setting. 
for our children so that they can learn from one another. And during this time where they're in this, this type of setting, they st all children strengthen their social, their cognitive, and their communication skills. The amount of time and services that are provided for children in preschool early intervention is based on each child's individual need. So there are a variety of models out there depending on what the child needs. Here we have a, a, a graphic of a one big circle because we are work together and we've actually joined hands very closely over the last couple of years so that it is the world of early childhood, not just separate services. You'll see here that we have our pre-K classes. We have what we call blended classes, which is an environment where we have approximately half of the children with an IEP and approximately half without. And then we have our preschool early intervention classes. Right now we have 45 pre-K classes, 12 blended classes, 39 preschool early intervention classes. So that's a total of 96 classes to support our young children. And so we're on the track of meeting the needs of our young children. And this quote kind of sums up so much. We would like to make sure we thank you for your investment in our young children. Preschool is not just an investment in children, but it's an investment in our society and our economy. Simply stated, today's children will become tomorrow's citizens, workers, and parents. When we invest wisely in children and families, the next generation will pay that back through a lifetime of productivity and responsible citizenship. And so we have a little thing from you for our children, and each of our children here in St. Tammany would like to thank you for your continued support. by working together, you really have helped us make a difference in the lives of our young children. And just to give you a number, we're servicing right now 940 regular education preschool children. We have about 50 on the waiting list, and our preschool early intervention is serving 742 children. So thank you, and are there any questions? Mrs. Belisario? Just so I get the numbers correct, we have 940 regular ed and 742 preschool intervention. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, do you have a cost per child that it costs us? Um, we co it costs approximately in a year's time about $5,000 per child. Is this considered an unfunded mandate? Um, do we get part of we that? We get some of that through our grants. 
But we don't get um, all of it. No. Okay. Don't. So it's a our system has been very day. supportive of our early childhood. And when I'm asked that question, I proudly say yes. Our school system proudly su does support our young children. Right. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Derman. Ms. Lane, uh, my question is kind of along the same line, but when we look at the 940 and the 742 and the 50 waiting, what actual percentage is that of all pre-K students that well, at the age level yes, in our we're parish? We're only looking at um, through the general education, which is the 50 waiting in the whatever it was, nine, whatever. That is... Um, only children who qualify for free or reduced lunch so you know we're, we're doing a good job of this year of um, servicing our free and reduced lunch population with a smaller waiting list than we have in the past and that is due to the fact that our system has helped us and opened an, an additional class um, we we have I know we have children approximately the same number of kindergarten preschool children as we do kindergartners so we do have children who do not necessarily qualify for free and l reduced lunch who are in other settings. So, um, Right, so basically if we have 45, 48 percent of our students qualify for free or reduced lunch, then we got another 50 percent mm -hmm. that That's isn't right. participating yes, because sir. they don't meet the qualifications. Yes, sir. So in order to serve every child in St. Tammany with this service or uh, we would have to double our facilities. Uh, just about. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hennigan. Ms. Lane, uh, how many locations do we have the uh, pre-K classes? All of our elementary schools have pre-K. All of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Loop. Is it possible to put the quote back up there, Beth, or sure. is that... I don't know how you have stuff is. If Beth could work this, it'd be half a person. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Dermot said it'd help if we needed I'll it. I'll find it. I'll get this way. <laughs> Louis, easier you for know, me. he usually calls in when he can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Maybe we could take that quote and put it in the envelope with the resolution going to the governor. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Loop. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lang. Mrs. Mrs. Hosh. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought, were you speaking? Okay, all right, thank you so much. You have something to say, Sharon? <laughs> moral support, okay. We have announcements for the pre from the president, Mrs. Heinz. Thank you, I usually make my announcements at the end of our business affairs committee meeting, but I feel like we have a, a large number of parents here tonight that will not stay for that meeting, although they're perfectly welcome to. And uh, I felt like our um, announcements were kind of timely tonight because St. Tammany Parish Schools are continuing with our community connections this weekend in a big way. We uh, have the parish fair and Mr. Foles, our teachers and students have worked very hard for some of the activities at the parish fair. So with that being said, let me make our announcements. Schools and offices are closed tomorrow so that students can attend the parish fair day. Superintendent Fulce will be the Grand Marshal of the Parish Fair, will lead the fa Parish Fair Parade beginning at 10 a.m. tomorrow, and then kick off the fair at its start this year with the theme of exploring nature in St. Tammany. And we're hoping that nature is going to hold out in no rain until after we get that done. We certainly encourage everyone to attend the parade and the fair throughout the weekend. And then on Saturday, Superintendent Fulce will be cooking for a cause and competing for the title of Top Chef at the Men Who Cook fundraising event for Hope House, a, a great organization, on Saturday, October 5th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the St. Tony Parish Justice Center's top level garage. And I'm going to say we all want to support Mr. Foles. And that and is for Hope House. It's for Hope. Well, that's right. I so go into so Hope House. Support Mr. Foles in his endeavors for Hope House. Yes. And then we have a special board meeting on Tuesday, October 8th at 7 p.m. for the purpose of conducting interviews for the position of Director of Maintenance and Custodial Services. That concludes the announcements. Thank Ms. You. Hines, if I may, uh, Mr. Foles, I have a cowboy hat for you if you want to wear it in a parade and 
I hope you have some help cooking. This city boy from Slidell is excited about being the Grand Marshal in the Parish Fair. I know you are. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Seeing no other um, items being brought, the, uh, th this committee meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much for everyone who came out tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to call this meeting to order for the St. Tammany Parish School Board Committee as a whole. Uh, meeting October 3rd, 2013, Business Affairs and Administrative. Uh, Ms. Taylor, roll call, please. Mr. Derman. Here. Mr. Hennigan. Here. Ms. Hines. Here. Mr. Luke. Here. Mr. Harold. Here. Ms. Tipton. Here. Mr. Jeter. Ms. Seeley. Here. Mr. Jeter, Mr. Jeter's here. I think he went to the restroom. Mr. Bettencourt. Here. Oh, I'm present. I'm sorry. Did you know? It's okay. I got you. Um, Mr. Womack. Here. Mr. Panks. Mr. Lamarck. He's here. Mr. Lamarck is here. And Mr. Alford. Mr. Ms. Belisario. Here. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Uh, we're going to dispense with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance, and I believe Ms. R Susan Russell has already spoke at the yes. previous uh, committee, so we're going to pass over that. And so we're going to move right to the approval of minutes for a committee as a whole meeting held September 5th, 2013. Do I have a motion? Maybe. Moved by Ms. Mullet, seconded by Mr. Betancourt. Uh, any comments from board members? Any comments from the public? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? So ordered. Um, next, we're going to move into administrative. Mr. Jabia. Thank you, Mr. Dermot. Uh, our first item is recommends authorization for Superintendent Fos and or Board President Heinz to execute a cooperative endeavor agreement relative to adjudicated property proceeds sharing with the St. Tammany Parish Governing Authority and other affected political subdivisions, and I think Mr. Foles has some comments. Thank you, Mr. Jerry. Uh, I think about a month or so ago, I was contacted by Parish President um, Pat Brister and uh, notified that they had planned to uh, make these moves on this adjudicated property. Uh, I immediately took the documents that were sent to me and sent them to Mr. Patuzak for review. So I'm going like, to like to ask Harry to come up and explain the process and what the uh, parish is hoping to accomplish and how it can um, affect or benefit our school system. This uh, procedure that the parish is suggesting is to sell pieces of property that previously uh, were put up for tax sale but that nobody purchased at the time. They have about 250 pieces of property that the redemptive period uh, of five years for the original owners to redeem the property is now passed. They will set about to, uh, at least in two groups, sell these pieces of property and all the uh, political subdivisions and municipalities which have uh, a share of the taxes that uh, uh, would come from those properties if they were on the rolls will receive a pro rata portion of uh, the proceeds. Uh, the purpose of this, of course, is, is to try and hopefully put this kind of property back on the rolls so that it'll be productive and we'll all collect uh, taxes from it in the future as opposed to where it is now where there are no taxes. This particular agreement sets forth basically what's in the law. It sets forth not only with respect to the board but the other uh, taxing uh, bodies. Uh, to join into it such that we have an orderly fashion and an orderly procedure so as to share the funds. Thank you. If we may, can we get a motion and a, and a second for discussion, please, on this item? I move. Moved by Ms. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Uh, Jeter. And any questions from the board? I guess I have one for you, Mr. Harry. When you're talking about uh, sharing in the proceeds, is it based upon what our millage assessments are? Is no. that, the, is that for the, the previous year? Previous right. year, yes. So, so that's the share, the proportionate share that we're talking about. 
Okay. In, in, you know, in relation, depending on how much is collected. Right. But I'm just saying that, that, yes. that you know, based on our, our millages and everything, yeah, that, that's and how and it's Part of our discussion was, you know, some of these properties are, are, are old, and there was some discussion to go back to what the millage was then, but they determined that it would be way too much paperwork too and trailing, and it, it was agreed upon by all to use the existing millages, which in our case would, would be fine for us. No question. We'll be quiet on that. Uh, that was kind of my point. Right. But anyway, okay, well, seeing no, no other questions from the board, any from the public? Seeing none from the public, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So ordered. Mr. Jabia. Thank you, Mr. Darman. A second item is uh, an update on Act 50, an act that was passed this past legislative session, and I've asked Mr. Kose to give you that update. Good evening, Superintendent Foles, uh, President Heights, board members. The recent legislative session passed Act 50, which in effect amended Louisiana Revised Statute 17,416.16 and added requirements relative to school crisis management and response plans. The multiple changes and additions were presented to our principals at our administrators' conference and included. Within the first 30 days of the school year, each school was required to conduct a lockdown drill. Security coordinators Bob Donald and Jim Suit helped facilitate this action with first responding agencies. The multiple agencies such as our emergency operations center, fire districts, and law enforcement agencies observed and provided support in our efforts to comply and solidify crisis management plans. The drills were recorded utilizing our web-based crisis management plan known as rapid responder. The required notification of revisions to the safety plan uh, to teachers and school employees at each of our schools was also noted in rapid responder. Every employee was educated to understand their role during such drills. Each principal is currently responsible for keeping a copy of the safety plan in their office. Each local municipal chief of police, our sheriff of St. Tammany, and local fire chiefs have been provided with access to their school's rapid responder plan. Our president and superintendent of the St. Timothy Parish School Board also has been provided access to the safety plan as is now required by this law. This concludes my report. Mr. Mr. Darman, this is, this is a requirement of the act that a report be made to the board regarding Act 50. Does the board have to take any action on it? It's just for information purposes? Information only. No, sir. And I, I just wanted to thank, um, you know, Bob and Jim and, and Mike for coordinating these efforts and our principals. You know, giving it to us on a 30-day window was a pretty tight timeline to start the school year. But um, we thought it was, we certainly wanted to follow the law and, and the procedures in place. And the thing I think I'm most proud of when we look at this new law and you see all the new parts of this law and the requirements, the many things that were required, we were already doing. You know, when we actually had, I think one of someone called me from Baton Rouge and they started citing all the things that this new law was going to require, and they said, "How is St. Tammany going to be?" And I said, "We're doing all those things already." So I think you know it's a, a credit to our people and the far-reaching sites that we've had to try to look at security and know the importance of school security. And as we say all the time, it's something that's never-ending and always changing and important for us to stay on the cutting edge of it. And that's what we're doing. And I think these drills were a good thing. It um, brought some things to our attention. And it put everyone's focus back on it to make sure that we keep it as a top priority in our system. So I thank everyone for their efforts on that. And we continue um, to be vigilant in that as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Foles. Any uh, questions or comments by board members? <coughs> Seeing none, Mr. Javia? Yes, sir. Our next item is our monthly maintenance and custodial report that reports at your desk. And uh, Mr. Richmond is here to answer any questions you may have. Any questions by the board? The last none. Time. Moving on. Our next report is our monthly uh, risk management report. Mr. Gaspard is here if you have questions. Any questions by board members for Mr. Gaspard? Seeing none, moving on. Monthly transport, uh, transportation reports in your packet. I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, our transportation people, like all of our people, 
have been working real hard, working on routes and getting those adjusted. Miss Amy is here if y'all have any questions. Any questions, board Mr. Hennigan? Just a quick one. I, I do want to uh, commend the Transportation Department for the very l few <laughs> number of uh, complaints or calls. This, they continue to do a good job. I, I was curious if there was any rather significant fallout from that one bus accident that we had where a, a car hit one of our buses. Are the students all right? I mean, are there any? Students okay, yes. The okay. same that you have any uh, update on that? The students are fine. Okay, good. Thank you. Any other questions from board members? Seeing none. Mr. Javier. That concludes my section, Mr. Dermot. Mr. Poles. Yeah, before we go to the next part, and, and I, Mr. Richmond purposely asked not to make a big deal out of his retirement, and I certainly honor his wishes in that. And um, I do think, though, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that this is Mr. Richmond's last meeting. And um, for many, many years, Mr. Richmond has given much to this school system in his leadership and his guidance and his dedication to the school system. And um, we're not going to embarrass him. We're not going to ask him to say anything. And we're not going to um, put him on the spot. But I am not going to let him get away without saying thank you for everything you've done for this school system. We'll miss your leadership. And um, we hope you a ha happy and healthy retirement. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Ronnie, be sure whenever whoever does take your place, they understand when you know when I call, I probably need something at Covington High. <laughs> well, make sure they understand. Uh, all right, moving on on the agenda to construction, uh, Miss Tipton. Thank you, Mr. Derman. Um, the first item under monthly construction projects is that we recommend acceptance of Brock Elementary School additions as substantially complete subject to the architect's recommendations, submission of all regulatory requirements, and approval of Superintendent Foles. Second. Okay, and that is STPSB project number 1014. Yes, sir. So we have a motion on the floor any comments or questions from the board members from the public all in favor say aye, aye. opposed abstain so ordered Ms. Tipton thank you the next uh, item is recommendations from the screening and evaluation committee I do want to mention that this was a tremendous effort not only by the people the firms that responded I know it takes a lot of effort on their part to uh, put together the submittals and respond to our RFQ. Also, the effort of the Screening and Evaluation Committee members to get through all of the uh, qualification statements that we received was a tremendous effort on their part. And uh, we have done this in basically a month's time, so I am very pleased to be able to bring that here tonight. Uh, we have several recommendations. Uh, the first group, and I'll just do them by groups, which is the way we considered them. Ms. Tiffany, could I just interrupt you real quick? Sure. I, I actually um, sat in on a portion of that, that meeting, uh, and I do want to say that it was very impressive. I mean, I was there for two, two and a half hours, and I think we got through maybe two or three of the awards, and I actually had to get back to my real job. But the committee members were very well informed they I mean they had a massive amount of material to go through look through study evaluate and go through this entire process so it was very in intensive I think it was done very effectively I just want to commend you and your staff and all the committee members because it is without question a uh, 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 overwhelming almost job to do and uh, and they do it free of cost and for our community and our students and our school system. So I do want to commend everyone uh, involved in that endeavor because what little bit I saw was a lot, and I just saw the tip of the iceberg. So, I, again, I just want to thank everybody for that. Go yes, ahead. Sir, I'm thank so you for saying that. So the first group of um, recommendations are as follows. This is for Type 1A design services for their renovation and addition projects. 
These are large capital projects from the bond issue that was passed in May. Uh, recommends the firm of Fauntleroy Latham Weld and Barre Architects for the replacement of modular wings at Pontchartrain Elementary and Chifuncta Middle Schools. Recommends the firm of Holly and Smith Architects for the replacement of modular wings at Fountain Blue Junior High School. Recommends the firm of Gassaway Gassaway Bankston Architects for the renovations at Pearl River High School. Recommends the firm of MSH Architects LLC for the renovations and additions at Clearwood Junior High School. Recommends the firm of Duplantis Design Group PC for the replacement of modular wings at Mandible Elementary School. Recommends the firm of Blitch Knievel Architects for renovations and additions at Abney Elementary School. Recommends the firm of Argus Architecture Engineering LLC for the renovations and additions at Slidell High School. Recommends the firm of Virgis Rome Architects for the renovations at North Shore High School. Recommends the firm of Broadmoor Design Group for the replacement of Modular Wing at Lyon Elementary School. Recommends the firm of Piazza Architecture Planning for the replacement of Modular Wing at Madisonville Elementary School. Recommends the firm of Chenevere Architects for the renovations at Carolyn Park Middle School. Recommends the firm of John C. Williams Architects LLC for the renovations at Mandeville Junior High School. Recommends the firm of KVS Architecture in association with Sizler Thompson Brown Architects for the renovations at Fountain Blue High School. And recommends the firm of Yates and Yates Architects LLC for the additions at Shatima Elementary School. Yes. I have a motion from Ms. Mullet, seconded by Ms. Sealing. Any comments from board members? Mr. Luke. Yes, uh, Cameron, exactly what we mean by the replacement of a modular wing. Yes, sir. In this case, we will be um, building conventional construction classroom wings in place of the modular okay. wings that are there now. Okay. And then Good. we will be removing or demolishing those modular yeah. wings. Oh. And these 14 projects are the 14 projects with the, with the 2000, 2013 bond issue listed in the brochure and uh, ex identical to what we promised to the public and the, the work that will be done from that. So, Thank you, Mr. Foles. Um, any comments from the public? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? So ordered. Thank you. Ms. Tips. The next group is also Type 1A Design Services, and these are the infrastructure projects that were listed in the bond issue um, from that was passed. So the first three were the um, HVAC replacement projects, and the last one will be the civil work. The first one is recommends the firm of MSH Architects LLC for the chiller system replacement and associated renovations at Covington High School. Recommends the firm of Crum Engineering LLC for the HVAC replacement and associated renovations at Slidell Junior High School. Recommends the firm of Moses Engineers Incorporated in association with Broadmoor Design Group for the HVAC replacement and associated renovations at Bonnie Cole Elementary School. And recommends the firm of Kyle Associates LLC for the sewer and water system tie-in to municipal system at Boyette Junior High and Little Oak Middle Schools. Okay, do I have a motion? Move. Okay. Move by Ms. Sealy. Second by Ms. Heinz. Any question by board members? By the public? Seeing none. All those in favor? Say aye. aye. Opposed? Abstain? So ordered. Ms. Tipton, can, can I ask you a question, I guess, based on both uh, sections here? I mean, some of these firms I recognize. Some of them I, I may not, but it doesn't mean that they haven't done work for us in the past. I mean, can you expand upon that just a little bit, maybe? Certainly. Um, we have, in the first group that you uh, considered, five new firms. Um, one of them was in the rotation pool and uh, was recommended uh, for a larger project this time. Uh, most all of these, let's see, 
10 of them are North Shore or St. Tammany Parish um, firms <coughs> or have most employees um, living on this side of the lake, even if their firm is, is in a different area from the parish. So this is a good representation of not only firms, but also people who live right in, uh, in our parish. And okay, thank you very much. Cameron, before you go to the next group, explain to the board and to the public how the rotation works on these others and, and what the process is for that and how they're selected and how they stay on the list as we move through this process. Yes, sir. So then the next group that we'll be considering on the agenda is what's called Type 1B Design Services. Oh, and this in the policy is considered small projects of $500,000 construction value or less. Um, and these are projects that come up in a year, say roofing or perhaps drainage or paving. It can be any number of smaller projects that uh, we may work on as a staff um, that are requested by the schools or that maintenance sees a need for. And they require design services in order to put those projects either out for quotes or bids depending on their size. Um, the firms that go into what we call the rotation pool um, are in that pool for one year and then they can um, indicate that they want to stay in the pool um, by updating their qualification statements and a staff recommendation comes to you yearly. You've, you've probably seen this around mm -hmm. August each year and they can stay or be um, allowed to stay in this rotation pool up to five years with a, a one-year increments where we bring that before the board. Um, this uh, RFQ s process uh, for this 2013 time, we did this a little bit different than we've done in the past um, in that we've, we've noticed over the years from experience that most of our smaller projects tend to be a single discipline type project. A roofing project may only require an <coughs> architect. A paving job or a drainage job may only need a civil engineer as opposed to a design team. So we ask the firms to tell us what their in-house capabilities are. So when I read these, they're going to be by discipline and sometimes there's overlap. Some firms do more than one type of um, service. But in, within staff, when we would receive a project such as this assigned to us from um, Mr. Foles or Mr. Jabia or elsewhere within staff, we would go through and see what the best fit is and also um, we would make sure that we are doing our best to give the same amount of work um, throughout the, the group of firms over time. So over the five year period we do our best to rotate through the firms that are in the list. Ms. Tipton, also uh, it's my understanding that the school board sets the, the rate that we pay I guess to for these services correct with you know based on certain stipulations but I mean it's not like a contractor that's bidding on a job and they get it we we actually kind of drive what the cost is to our professional services yes sir so our so our design a professional service agreement does have a fee formula that is indicated in it and that works as a percentage of the construction value um, in, in the larger projects, that, that varies. A smaller project's a little bit more percentage, and a larger project is a smaller percentage. Um, it probably works out to be somewhere in the 6 to 8% range of the construction value. On these smaller projects, um, for instance, a roofing job, single uh, discipline architect working on it, we will do what we call a multiplier factor, and it will be less than the 100 percent or the one, uh, we may be 65 percent of the fee or something like that based on the difficulty or what's involved in putting the job together. So we do look at that. And on a renovation job, the multiplier factor might be just a little bit more because they have, may have to go in and figure out existing conditions right and my main point is we actually set those scales and we're in control of them throughout this process it's not that we're letting the the, the service provider dictate to us what the costs are we're actually formulating that in advance yes sir 
That is correct. Thank you. So the recommendations of the Screening Evaluation Committee for the Type 1B Rotation Design Services are as follows. For primarily architectural design services, the following firms, Antoine Architects, LLC, Argus Architecture Engineering, LLC, Broadmoor Design Group, Damon Engineering Incorporated, Duplantis Design Group, PC, Fontlory Latham Weldon Barre, APC, Gasway Gasway Bankston Architects, APAC, Holly and Smith Architects, KVS Architecture, Linfield Hunter and Junius Incorporated, Mathis Briere Architects, Meyer Engineers, LTD, MSH Architects, LLC, Brett Petrie Architect, LLC, Piazza Architecture Planning, APAC, Principal Engineering Incorporated, RCL Architecture LLC, Harry Baker Smith Architects II, Virgis Rome Architects APAC, WDG Architects Engineers, John C. Williams Architects LLC. For Mechanical Electrical Engineering Design Services primarily, ADG New Orleans LLC, Asif Simono Tozan Associates Incorporated, Burke Klein Peter Incorporated, Daniel T. Cologne and Associates, Damon Engineering Incorporated. Ms. Tipton, yes, I think we need to take them by the by the first group, second group, third group, and vote on each one of those instead of the whole body of them, if you don't mind. Okay, this is all rotation pool. Is it okay, Harry, just to do them all at once? Okay. All right. Let's all right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Drake Engineering LLC. Henry C. Erie Jr. PE Incorporated, Performance Analysis LLC, Principal Engineering Incorporated, Professional Engineering and Environmental Consultants Incorporated, Providence slash GSC Associates LLC, Ritter Consulting Engineers LTD, WDG Architects Engineers, and for Structural Civil Engineering and Landscape Architect Design Services primarily, the firms of John C. Bose Consulting Engineer, J.V. Burks and Associates Incorporated, Burke Klein Peter Incorporated, Duplantis Design Group PC, Kelly McEwen Associates Incorporated, Kyle Associates LLC, Richard C. Lambert Consultants LLC, Meyer Engineers LTD, Pinnacle Engineering LLC, and Principal Engineering Incorporated. Okay. So now, do I have a motion? Okay. Let me get a motion first. Ms. Ms. Heinz, motion. Mr. Jeter, second. All right, Ms. Seeley, question. Just a point of clarification. Um, I know in the first group it was for projects 500,000 or less. Um, what about the ones that are larger? Where does that fall? Does that fall in the third group? That no, all, all the ones I just read would be for the small rotation uh, oh, pool okay. projects, which would be $500,000 or okay. less. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Heinz. Ms. Tipton, the uh, architectural design services list looks a little bit longer than usual, and I don't have any objection to that, but I, am, I would like to know, is it longer than usual? Last... Uh, in 2008, when we first considered uh, the rotation pool from the last bond issue, we had about 20 some odd, just around 20 or so um, firms total, and two or three of those were mechanical, electrical engineers only. So this is a f just a few more architectural firms than we had previously. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more in the mechanical, electrical, and structural civil um, groups than we had previously. Thank you for that. Any other questions by board members? I, I think uh, if, if I remember right during the committee meeting um, with this, I think you said they had 97 total. Yes, sir. Um, over all the services, and uh, we received 97 qualification statement responses. So the, the screening and evaluation committee had to look at a total of 97 responses for all services overall. 
And so everyone that applied did not really make the list as far as no, this is sir. concerned. Um, I can tell you that for architectural, there were 35 applicants, and this is 21 of those, so about half. Um, the, for the mechanical and electrical, this actually is, is all, all of the applicants that applied. And then for structural and uh, civil, that's about half of the number that applied. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions by board members? From the public? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose? Abstain? So ordered. Thank you, Ms. Tiffin. Um, one more uh, group, if, if you'll stay with me. Uh, type 2A, 2B, technical services. Now, the ones that are in these groups um, are in an, a list that's approved by the school system to be used when we need these services and we would receive proposals for whatever scope of work we find that we need. With regard to material testing, that may also be a group of um, firms that are listed in our construction specifications that may be used for material testing. So. Um, the following firms are recommended by the Screening and Evaluation Committee for land surveying as long as they have and maintain appropriate licensing and insurances, Acadia Land Surveying LLC, Randall W. Brown and Associates Incorporated, J.B. Burks and Associates Incorporated, John G. Cummings and Associates, GEC Incorporated, Land Surveying LLC, Linfield Hunter and Junius Incorporated, Kelly McHugh and Associates, McLenn and Associates, Providence GSC Associates, Quality Engineering and Surveying LLC. And for material testing services, as long as they have and maintain appropriate licensing, insurance, and national certification, APS Design and Testing, Artiman and Associates Incorporated, Eustace Engineering Services LLC, Gulf South Engineering and Testing Incorporated, Intech of Louisiana, Professional Service Industries Incorporated, Southern Earth Sciences Incorporated, Stratum Engineering LLC, Terracon Consultants Incorporated, Tulani Wong Engineers Incorporated, and for geotechnical services as long as they have and maintain appropriate licensing, insurance, and national certification. APS Design and, and Testing, Artiman and Associates Incorporated, Eustace Engineering Services LLC, Gulf South Engineering and Testing Incorporated, Intech of Louisiana, Professional Service Industries Incorporated, Southern Earth Sciences Incorporated, Stratum Engineering LLC, Terracon Consultants Incorporated, and Tulani Wong Engineers Incorporated. Okay, do I have a motion? Move. Moved by Ms. Seeley, second by Ms. Tipton. Uh, any questions by the board members? By the public? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. So ordered. Mr. Dermott, if I could, and I know we've touched on this a little bit, but I just want to reiterate what a massive undertaking this was for this committee of people. I think they started at 9 in the morning, and I think they finished after 5 that afternoon. Um, they gave up their day at work and their other jobs and responsibilities to do this. And the reason this is so important to our school system is it allows us to get these projects rolling you know this would have taken longer it would have slowed down the projects all these projects that we identified are important to our school system in many ways so to get the ball rolling real quick and to get off on a good foot is certainly important and uh, I know Cameron would never brag on herself but let me tell you that none of this happens without the work of Cameron and the, and the ladies and Sammy and the others that work in her office and it's a lot of paperwork and a lot of things to be organize and have to fall in place for all this to happen. So I just want to thank Cameron for her leadership in that and the people that work for her as well. And um, we're excited about the people and we're excited about moving forward on these projects, which will benefit all the ch our children in our school system. And thank you, Mr. Foles. And I, I would be remiss if I did not mention that uh, one of my fellow board members, Mr. Ray Alfred, was also there during the part of that uh, 
committee meeting. So two of us were sitting there, and we were writing down numbers as fast as we could. <laughs> we weren't adding them up, thank God. We were letting somebody else tell us what the final quote, uh, average was. So, But it was very enlightening, I think, for both Ray and I to observe uh, a portion of that. And there again, we do thank you all. Okay, moving on to the monthly construction report, Ms. Tipton. Thank you. Um, our, as you notice, our monthly construction point is, uh, report is dwindling, so it is great that we are going to be starting new projects. We're very excited about that. Um, just briefly, I'll tell you that um, the contractor for the addition to Brock Elementary is scheduling final inspections by the city and fire marshal, and the architect and engineers have been out doing punch list inspections this week. Um, at Fifth Ward, the renovation of the pre-K wing is progressing well. They um, have nearly completed the interior painting. They've started up the uh, air conditioning units and they're planning the uh, final finish work, such as putting down the flooring. So that's moving along. Um, and then at Fifth Ward, I'm sorry, the, at Woodlake, Wing 5 um, is continuing to progress. They have some HVAC duct work um, installed. They have about half of the window frames installed and some glass installed on the north side of the building. Uh, so they do continue to, to work on that project there. Thank you. Any questions uh, by board members for Ms. Tipton? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. I guess we're gonna move now to business affairs. Ms. Fortenberry. The monthly purchasing reports is in your packet. Ms. Stevens is here to answer any questions you may have. Any questions? Seeing none, we're going to go to Mr. Foles with social media video. Thank you, Mr. Dermot. I know the night is long. You've been here a while, but I, I feel it's important. I wanted to share this video with you. You know, we started talking about this at the end of last year. We actually put together a rough draft of social media video that we show to our principals. Uh, we took their input and their suggestions. We tweaked it a little bit and we um, prepared the final document, the final video that you'll see tonight in just a few minutes. And what we've done with this video, and I'll tell you, social media and the things on there are something that we continue to battle with on a daily basis in our school system from many different degrees and angles and things like that. So what we tried to hope to accomplish with this video was number one to our students to make them realize that when you put something out there that is pretty much there forever and also to work with our parents and share with them you know how we do business, what we expect, how we try to get our information out and hopefully get them to work with us and to share good accurate information that comes from our school system and not some from some other sources that might not be as accurate. Um, we have started showing these videos to all the students at the high school and junior high school level. It's been very well received. We also have made our parents aware that it's available for them to view and we do hope that they too will view it. I've gotten some really good feedback from school people as well as parents that have thanked us for this video and um, it's allowed them a time to sit down with their child and discuss some of the things in the video, a kind of a framework of discussing these things and bringing it to their house as well. So we want to share with you tonight, it's about 10 minutes long. Uh, I, I hope you'll see the benefits of it. As you will see, we had many different community people involved in it, um, spent some time with and of course Channel 13 was the one that did the leg work. So if you don't mind, we'd like to show that to you here tonight. We in law enforcement can no longer take a simple rumor uh, for granted any longer. And these days there's no face-to-face -face contact anymore. If you don't want to be visited by a sheriff's deputy and you don't want to see your family go through that, then don't bully. A lot of times these kids just don't realize the ramifications of what they're doing. Once we post something on the internet, we have lost our right to privacy. Social networking is a global revolution enabling nearly one billion people worldwide to communicate with their friends through sharing photographs, videos, and personal messages. Many people now see Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, text messaging, chat rooms, blogs, and many other forms of social networking as simply a way of life. And as the popularity of social networking sites grow, so do the risks of using them. News spreads fast in social networks, but what is fact and what is rumor? 
Being online makes it easy to share, repost, or repeat, but just because it's easy doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Anonymous or not, before putting information online, think about what you're putting out there for the whole world to see. Jokes, false statements, and rumors may seem harmless, but can have serious consequences. We in law enforcement can no longer take a simple rumor uh, for granted any longer. Uh, we have to assume that there is specific threat if a rumor um, is spread. Uh, we have to investigate it, if you will, as though it, it is a potential crime. We spend a lot of man hours uh, investigating and running down rumors, uh, and, and that's what we do. Using the internet to create widespread panic is not the good thing to do. This sheriff's office, and indeed all law enforcement in this region, takes those rumors, if you will, very seriously. So I would encourage any young person who is participating in spreading a rumor to be aware that they could be part of a criminal investigation. You come across a rumor on the internet, whether it's social media, whether it's even a text message, report it. Report it to an adult, report it to a parent, teacher, or your principal. I think we want them to report it to someone in, in charge, whether it be their parent or whether it be someone at the school. And we take all rumors seriously, so we encourage them to report that and then let us determine whether it's the rumor or the truth. So take it as the truth, report it to us, and then we'll make the final determination as we work with law enforcement. Don't let it be you that, um, that remains silent or refuses to bring information forward and unfortunately a tragedy visits your school. It used to be that bullying took place on the playground or the parking lot. The internet has changed all that. Technology can now be used to threaten, intimidate, and even bemean others. Cyberbullying takes place in text messages, emails, online posts, and pictures. Not only has the way bullying takes place changed, so has the impact. No longer is the issue between two people. If it's on the internet, it can be seen by millions making the damage devastating and perhaps permanent. Any transmission of electronic data can be deemed cyberbullying. The problem with cyberbullying is, is that our kids are harassed in a multitude of ways. They can receive text messages. They can, of course, be called on their landlines, on their home phones, or they can be called on their cell phones. They can receive the text messages, the email. They can have. Uh, messages posted on their Facebook pages. Now when you've posted to Facebook or MySpace or any social blog, it's out there for everyone. And every time they read it, the abuse is occurring every single time. Think about the unintended consequences because sometimes the things that we say to people, the things that we do to them, can sometimes push them to do something that we never would have conceived. If you're a victim or know somebody that is being cyberbullied, you need to report it to a teacher, a parent, or you know, a trusted adult. We have all heard in the newspapers about these kids who ultimately take their own lives because they believe that their only option is to take their own lives to escape the bullying. And I'm sorry does not make that okay. Words hurt whether you're telling it to their face or whether you're typing it so that it can be read over and over and over again. In many cases, it even has a more severe impact on the person who's receiving those threats. If you don't want to be visited by a sheriff's deputy and you don't want to see your family go through that, then don't bully. Once you hit send, it's too late, we're coming. It just takes a moment to post, a second to hit send. One impulse decision can take a toll for years to come. Sending or forwarding an inappropriate picture or an offensive message could make a difference in getting accepted into college, landing the job of your dreams, or making future friends. And if you're under the age of 17, it is illegal. Sexting is the transmission of images and text. So it's not just sending an image of a boyfriend or girlfriend, but it's also lewd text suggestive of sex. So let's say, for example, what we have is we have a minor who is, um, usually it's a boyfriend-girlfriend type scenario. We have a girl who has taken a nude photograph of herself and then sent it by text message to her boyfriend. She has just manufactured child pornography. Kids and parents need to be mindful of the fact that their children can be held accountable for 
um, the content of a text message or email, even when all their child did was forward the text message or email. If your child has received an image of a minor, you absolutely need to report that to law enforcement to protect your child and obviously to protect the child who is depicted in the image. The internet offers many ways to have fun. Games and apps challenge and entertain. Facebook connects with friends. Twitter details lives and YouTube broadcasts across the world. But all of this comes with risks. Share too much information and someone can take advantage, turning that fun into danger. Our kids have the ability to uh, play games against individuals that they're not familiar with. When you're talking to people online, whether it's social media, whether it's Xbox Live, um, you don't know who you're talking to. They're not really thinking about the type of information that they're giving out because it's just, they're just having a conversation, they're just playing a game. They're just cloaked behind all of these wires and, you know, tunnels of information. Just be cautious of putting uh, identifying information onto the internet. Uh, once it is put public out there, uh, there's no retrieving that information and you don't know who is on the outside trying to retrieve that and use it for their advantage and your disadvantage. You have to remember, people who commit crimes uh, don't just wake up and, and, and out, of, out of character say, I'm going to commit a crime. But parents need to realize and students need to realize that they don't know who they're talking to. So if they can get online and engage in conversation with someone and get their identity or something as simple as their address, um, then now this person who is all along intended to commit a crime can pattern your family and ultimately commit a uh, home burglary or God forbid worse. The first time you log on to the internet, your digital footprint steps onto the World Wide Web. With every status update, every picture posted, every text, every chat and blog, the size of your digital footprint increases. It's recorded, and stored in cyberspace forever. Your digital footprint is anything that you do online. Just like you see footprints in the snow, it's the same thing. I think what kids don't realize is that when you log on to a social media site, regardless of what it is, that you lose your right to the expectation of privacy. Whenever you are online, anything and everything that you do, you're able to track. Think the impact that you're going to have and think if that's something that you want to show up on the front page of the paper or something to be with you when you interview for a job five years from now or when you put in your application to go to college. This will stay with you forever, so think before you hit the send button. We are going to have employers who are going to access Facebook accounts who are going to Google us. We're going to have uh, colleges who are going to make college admission decisions based on the information that they are finding about our children, about ourselves on the internet. Although you may believe that you've erased it off of the internet, uh, it is truly never completely erased off the networking sites. It's always going to be there. It's always going to follow you. No matter how old you are, it's going to just haunt you and haunt you and haunt you and you're going to wish that you had never done it. Once we post something on the internet, we have lost our right to privacy. So remember, never share your username or password. Don't give out personal details. Use privacy settings. Change your passwords regularly. Be aware of the consequences of what you post. Never say anything to anyone online that you wouldn't say to their face. Don't become friends online if you don't know the person in the real world. Don't cyberbully, and if you're being cyberbullied, tell authorities. Don't spread false rumor, in fact, report it. And remember, once posted, always posted. Finally, think before you click. So we will continue to show this, we will continue to make it available both you know, on our website, 
I actually, uh, at my last Region 2 meeting, I shared it with some of the superintendents in our region, and they're going to actually use it in, in some of their school systems as well. I want to uh, thank Kirk Sprague, who works for ABC 26, also lives in St. Tammany Parish, right? Um, he was the narrator for us on that, so he gave us his time and talents to do that, so we certainly appreciate that. And, of course, Channel 13 and... Um, for their efforts on this, and I think something that will pay benefits to our school system and, and to our students as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Folson. It's very well done. Appreciate it. Um, I, Ms. Heinz, do you have any more announcements, or you gave them all out? All right. Thank you all very much, and uh, meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm.